Okay, now that we've got our data all ready, uh, it's time to do go ahead and do some predictions. I'm going to change this from pre-processing to um, Mike Byers prediction. Okay, uh, we really don't need this. Well, it doesn't hurt to leave it, I guess. Normalized data, um, I'll put this one over here too. I'm going to change uh, our normalizing. Let's go back to our z-score again and launch our column selector and let's uh, let's make sure we have everything in here that we want to, uh, z scores for so i'm going to you know i'm going to take the changes back to column type numeric that'll work z scores for all next to make a prediction something we didn't do when we ran the linear regression in excel we want to avoid overfitting our prediction what that means is uh, the sample that we have, there's a good chance that it's not a perfect representation of the entire population that we want to predict for. So what we do to avoid that is we split the data set up into two sets, a training set and a testing set. The training set is what we did before, where we want, it's the set of data we want to use to calculate our regression weights um, and uh, our predictions. The testing set is a separate portion of the data that we use to then use our our trained model to make predictions for and we treat those separately we predict for the testing set and then we can evaluate how accurate our predictions were and that helps us to prevent this overfitting problem so what we want to do is pull a split data type in split here it is part of um, the data transformation drop that in here let's pull from our normalized data Oh, whoops, can't pull from that side. It has to come from this side right here. Whoops, grab that. There we go. Notice how it, it's kind of nice. It'll turn green for me if I'm doing it the right way. Here it's red. It says cannot connect that because it's basically it's meant for something else. Don't worry about it. We'll use this later. This one, there we go. It's green. It's happy. So there's some features we've got to edit here on the split data. So fraction of rows in the first, I think what it means, what it's trying to say here. Yeah. Will it show me if I do this? There we go. And the first output of data set. Um, basically, what percent of the rows do we want to use for testing? Or sorry, for training. I usually will use something like 70%. We'll do a 70-30 or an 80-20 split. Um, here, if I put in a number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I give it a seed. A, a, a re, it's random, but a reproducible randomized selection of 70%. So uh, by giving it a certain seed, it'll always be the same 70%, even though it is randomly selected from the data set. Stratified split, this is useful. Um, we're not going to use it. It's if we want to split along a certain variable. Uh, you know what? We're not going to use that one right now. So there's our split data. Next, we need to select an algorithm to predict with and train the model. So remember when we were in Excel, we trained the model by running that regression tool and the Excel data analysis pack. And uh, simply clicking OK is what generated that output with the regression coefficients and the p-values. That was the process of training a model. So here, it's a lot simpler. All we do is come here and type in train. OK, fine, train model. To get more specific, there it is. Pull that in. Um, we'll grab a split. It tells us here's where it needs to go into. The reason why it needs to go there, move these up a bit, is because train model needs two inputs. It needs the data we want to train it based on and the algorithm, the statistical formula we want to use to do the model training. We actually have lots of options for this. Come over here and I'm going to collapse this data sets here. Train data conversion. I'm not going to do that. Not going to do that. That. What did I, here we go. Machine learning. This is what we want. So we're not about to evaluate the model quite yet. What we want to do is initialize the model. And it gives us, it divides up our algorithms into several types. And this is useful. Here's clustering. You remember this one. Linear regression. That's what we did in Excel. We've also got what we call classification. We use this when our dependent variable is not a zero or is not numeric. It is categorical. And then anomaly detection. This is similar, uh, but it lets us find rare cases of something like uh, credit card fraud would be an example. We'll use these when we're trying to predict which transactions are fraudulent. Anyway, we have some options here. And uh, what we need to realize or, or remember, 
actually I need to back up um, before we pick a formula we've got more data than we need in fact if I look at my records here data set visualize I've got uh, far more I'm not going to use both marital status and marital status numeric in my prediction I'm going to pick one of them same thing uh, with my purchase bike numeric and purchase bike I'm only going to use one of those so what I want to do here is pull in what's called a uh, select columns there it is select yep select columns in data set right here and I need to put this in here before my split data. And actually, I could do it before even my normalized data. I'm going to pull this up here and say, OK, I don't want to do this yet. I want to pull that one into here, this one into there. And I first have to tell it which columns I want and don't want. So I clearly I don't need ID. That's not going to predict anything. Um, marital status. Let's let's start by uh, because it's really it doesn't matter um, because it's binary which one I use I'm going to go ahead and bring that one in gender I'm going to use that one I don't need the numeric versions income children yes definitely bring both of those in um, in this model right now I'm going to include education numeric because I want you to see the change in predictive capability when we treat it as an ordinal number versus as a category but we'll start with the numeric let's pull in cars and age homeowner I've got right here education uh, I'm not going to include that because I've got the numeric version so grab occupation homeowner commute distance region they live in perfect so I'm leaving out the irrelevant and duplicated stuff but at this point I've also got, I gotta remember I'm predicting purchase bike but purchase bike is categorical since I'm, I want to show you the linear regression first so let's include the numeric version of purchase bike for now all right, let's hit OK. Uh, it's still going to normalize the way I've set this up, anything that's numeric. So that's totally fine. It'll turn into a z-score. Uh, we're still going to split the data on a 70. Yep, that's all just fine. So back here to train model. It's going to want to know um, which column do you want to predict. Select a single column. If I click on this, is it going to let me show me a list? Sometimes it's really weird. I have to change this around and then it'll show there now all of a sudden it shows me everything I'm not sure why that is but anyway obviously what we want to predict oh and why are these things showing up let me show you why it's because we haven't rerun this so uh, I'm going to rerun it and it's going to do everything from up here and then it's probably going to stop down on train model because it can't do that one yet oh no let's run select columns run just selected okay normalize data now, uh, when I come down to train model, since I ran that select columns, I should only get, change this again. Uh, no, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Purchase bike numeric. That's the one I want to predict. Run or OK. Now, before this will work, the reason it wasn't letting me run, it's got to have a uh, algorithm in here. So let's go back. And get rid of this let's choose this first time I want to make it as much like our Excel prediction as possible so I want to grab this linear regression and drop it right there and connect it down to train model okay now uh, this should all work just fine and I should be able to run there we go let's let that run for a bit okay doing its selection normalizing it should still be working let's see here is that it can I view no okay for some reason what I had to do is I had to click on normalize data and then hit run selected it wasn't running altogether let me hit run selected on split data now let's see if that works okay now it's happy now it's running eh, I don't really need this summarized data anymore I may as well kill that one to save time. Delete. Uh, let's see here. I don't necessarily need to run a linear regression. I need to run a trained model, though. Let's run that selected one there. See how I highlighted them both together. Sometimes this tool is still a little bit touchy. OK. 
Okay, there we go. Using the regression thinking. Still thinking. There we go. All right, let's right click. Trained model. Visualize. Here's what it gives us. Okay. I'm using a uh, linear regression. Here's my weights. Now remember in Excel, we call these coefficients when we printed output of the output results. Now, what it's done though, remember, and this is awesome, this will make you love Azure ML Studio after you've completed that lending tree checkpoint. Commute distance was a, ca was a categorical variable, even though there's an order to it. If you remember, with categorical variables, if we're gonna run a linear regression, we have to turn all of them into dummy codes. And that's what it's done here, is it said, here's one variable. Commute distance, 10 plus miles. Commute, uh, oh, and actually it's, it's sorted these in orders of largest to smallest regression weights. So we have another categorical variable, occupation. So this is the one representing those who are professionals. Commute distance. So these are the biggest weights after calculating z-scores. So we scroll down, scroll down. It's got all of them in here. Uh, these are basically because they... Um, the unknown, uh, the, because they include every one of the dummy codes, these are kind of like the baselines. Um, female, male, age. Cool. What we want to do next, though, that's not particularly useful, is we want to evaluate this model and see how good it did. So come here and grab an evaluate. There we go. Grab this pill. Uh, oh, sorry. I can't evaluate yet until I score the model. Score the model is now it's, it's saying, it means that we've come up with the weights. Now we need to apply those weights. And we're back here on our split. We saved 30% of the data for testing. So we need to take that trained model and use it to create our predictions like we did in Excel when we used that uh, sum product function. So click this, drop it down into score model, and let's run the selected. Oh, sorry. If this is going to work, I've got to grab my split data and pull it down into here too. So this is the connection that allows the other 30% of the data to know to come in here and be scored. So now I can run that one. All right, I'm going to pause it here while I wait. Okay, let's right click, visualize. Okay, perfect. So what we have here is the remaining 30% or 300 rows since we had 1,000. And it's got their actual data. Um, remember, we calculated, turn these things into z-scores. That's why they're different. And then right here, uh, ignore, even though it's using purchase bike numeric, uh, it's not using this in the actual prediction. This right here is the actual prediction. So what I can do, it says we predict this one to be a negative... Uh, 0.27 and their actual score was negative 0.96 which because this was a binary variable before this means zero they didn't purchase a bike so this prediction isn't particularly good because it's actually closer to one they did buy a bike no no no. sorry I take that back no if 1.03 means they did buy a bike then this is closer to negative 0.96 so this means we predict they won't buy a bike and uh, they didn't so here's our actual predictions for each of these I don't think I like having the z-score for that one, so I'm going to come back here and change this. Instead of a z-score for everything, I'm going to say do a z-score for... i got to do this stupid thing again where I change it to indices and then back. Now it works magically. Do it for income, children, education numeric, cars, age, and that's all of the numeric fields and not purchase by numeric. Okay, run that. Let's see if I can rerun the whole thing from here. No, it's going to make me do it one at a time. Oh, no, maybe it isn't. No, there we go. That's going to work. Let me go ahead and pause it again while I wait. Okay, so, oops, zoom back in. Uh, let's now take a look at score model. All right, here's their purchase bike, 0 or 1. We didn't convert to a z-score. And here's their actual prediction. So this first person, because it's closer to 0, uh, that means it's a prediction of 0. 
All right, well, how good are these actual predictions? That's what we still don't know yet. We can look at it and try to come up with it, but we've got that nice one evaluate model that I got to a little bit too soon before. Let's pull that down here, drop, bring score model down into evaluate model. Let's run that selected pill. I think for a second I keep trying to scroll down, not zoom out. Thinking. Beautiful. Evaluation results. Visualize. Okay. This should start to look a little bit familiar. Coefficient of determination. This is a fancy name for R squared. 10%. Point 0.101. So here's our... Uh, uh, well, I won't get into error right now. R squared. This is our effect size or our explanation of how good our prediction is. So let's make one minor change. Let's go back here to select columns and data set. And instead of using education numeric, remember our R squared value was 10.1%. Let's remove that one and use education, the categorical variable. And let's let it go ahead and create the dummy codes for us. Nice and easy. Um, that's the only change we want to make. Let's rerun this. And let's see if our R squared improves at all by using education as a categorical variable versus a numeric. Now, you'll recall when we did this in Excel, our R squared that we were getting initially was like 9%-ish, something like that. So we're already better. The difference is, remember, I got rid of a lot of my numeric transformations, um, you know, converting marital status to 0, 1, gender to 0, 1, all that stuff. And we treated everything um, as... Uh, and here we treat everything as categorical like it's meant to be. Oh, sorry, normalize. I got to edit this. Um, I don't have education numeric anymore. So I'm going to leave that one off. Let's run that one more time. Okay. So, again, hopefully you see the advantages of a tool like this. No creating dummy codes. No performing your own transformations. Uh, to normalize the data, things like that. And everything is nice drag and drop and cloud-based. Don't even have to have anything installed on my machine other than a uh, browser. Okay, scoring, trained, evaluate, almost done. All right, let's take a look. Visualize. 10.4, we have gotten slightly better. Not a massive improvement, but an obvious improvement. We didn't have to go collect any new data to do that. We just needed to make sure that we had it in the right format. We've already improved our R-squared. So um, this is just a brief introduction. We're going to, through the rest of this course, learn uh, a variety, not every single one of these, but a variety of these other algorithms and apply them in appropriate situations. And I uh, hope you enjoy it.